The invasion came to Ixalan. The subtle warnings were ignored by its inhabitants. Odd symbols glimpsed by sailors, a tree weeping black oil, a red cloud that lingered in defiance of the wind. The Sun Empire had been at war with the Legion of Dusk. The Legion had conquered the Empire's land, carving it up and naming it after their queen, Marilda. The Sun Empire had driven the Legion out of the Golden City of Araska back to their fortress islands in Queen's Bay. The Emperor declared they would build their own ships to sail across the ocean and repay the Legion the fear they had brought to Ixalan. Mighty forests thinned as the Sun Empire took to the tides. Quetzalcoatl dinosaur handlers searched the jungles to find suitable mounts for the cavalry. However, they didn't know another invasion was underway. Hey everyone and welcome back to the Ether Hub. I'm Simon bringing you more Magic the Gathering lore. Today we continue the story of March of the Machine, the latest MTG set that's gearing up to change the game forever. In the previous chapter, which you can find linked on your screen right now or in the description below, we return to the hellscape that is New Phyrexia. At the epicenter of Elish Norn's invasion, Chandra and Ren plot to have the Dryad fuse with the invasion tree to take it down and use it against the enemy. Now we return to the invasion as it spreads throughout the multiverse, taking a look at the plane of Ixalan and how it's faring against the Phyrexian threat. Will their planeswalking protector, Huatli, be able to stem the tide? Remember, if you're enjoying the content, consider supporting the channel by leaving this video a like, becoming a subscriber or member of the channel, dropping a super thanks, and of course, sharing it with friends. Let's continue the March of the Machine story with Chapter 8, Ixalan, 300 Steps Under the Sun, written by Miguel Lopez. But first, a quick word from today's video sponsor. Hey everyone, today's video is sponsored by Extra Wallets. Now this is a super slim, super minimalist wallet. Now the reason I like it super, super slim is that I can sit at Friday Night Magic all night. The Parliament Wallet from Exter can hold 15 cards. Now, Ed's holding my bank cards right now, which to me aren't that valuable. I wish it could hold my valuable cards, like my foil Jace the Mind Sculptor, but it holds your bank cards and it's pretty sweet. Now one of the reasons I really love my Exter wallet is because it has a nice tracking chip that you can put right inside of it so you'll never lose your wallet. Think about a very busy, chaotic night playing limited with your friends, right? There's wrapping everywhere, there's cards all over the place. You might not be able to find your wallet. You use an app on your phone and it will signal exactly where your wallet is. So guys, I really recommend you checking out Exter wallets. You can find my affiliate link in the description below. And they also have an anniversary sale going on right now until April 24th, where you can take an extra 25% off of your purchase right now. In Pachatupa, the capital of the Sun Empire stood under siege. The invasion at their doorstep. There was commotion at the door as it rattled on its hinges as something huge rammed into it. Her cousin, Inti, spoke words of encouragement, saying they would get through this, and Huatli would speak this story to the Empire when the sun rose again. She was the warrior poet, the only one in Ixalan, and it was her duty to tell the stories of her plane. Inti trusted her, so everything would be fine. Maverin Fane, the vampire paladin of the Legion of Dusk, approached them, asking what they should do next, but Huatli just shrugged. The Phyrexians knew where they were, so, they would let the invaders surround them. The war between the Sun Empire and the Legion of Dusk had halted. A new, common enemy drew both of their ire. Now survival was all that mattered, not petty squabbles or claims over rights to ancient lands. The Sun Empire and Legion of Dusk alike were bait, necessary for hunting a great beast. The Imperial Throne Room had been converted into a war room. Watley stood exhausted along with many other comrades as they gave the Emperor their reports. The Dawn Fleet had been lost in a hurricane, which in turn kept the Aerosaur Flyers from finding them. A dozen towns along the northern barrier were empty save for the writhing masses of flesh and metal. To the west, there were lakes bubbling oil and machine insects buzzing through the jungle. A dozen dead, a hundred dead, a thousand dead. Imperial soldiers and civilians melded to metal and lashing cables. The Phyrexian forces were so fast, the reports could not reach the Emperor in time to organize a counterattack. Retreat was the only rational choice. The Emperor turned to Huatli, asking if her planeswalking powers could help them. She shook her head. 
But she did have a plan that others could help with. She would call the Elder Dinosaurs to the Golden City of Oraska to draw the Phyrexians away from the capital. She would just need a small force of her lancers and a few volunteers who knew the jungle. Watley's company slipped out of the city, seeing scorched fields and hearing the lingering sounds of the trumpeting monstrosaurs and imperial brontodons, a diversion. She wanted not to think of the battle raging on the other side of the capital, all those lives thrown to the slaughter for hope, but she stood as the imperial conscience. It was her job to remember this moment and to speak this pain into history. They arrived in Orazga in the morning to find the surrounding foliage withered to black rot and acid rain filling the waterfalls, turning them into raging torrents. A soldier that had been garrisoned in Orazga since the start of the invasion approached, informing them that the Phyrexians roamed the city. Huatli needed to get to the recitation chamber in the Winged Temple, but no one had heard from those who were posted there in several days. The only route was taking the 300 steps to the top, where they would be exposed. As they moved to the steps, a red flash illuminated the sky and a roar pierced through the sound of waterfalls. On the horizon was Itali, one of the elder dinosaurs. He was huge. To be in his proximity was to crouch under a mountain of teeth and scales. The Quatsakama of Watley's company pulled against their restraints, breaking free, throwing their handlers to the side in their escape. Itali belched ink-black clouds from his core. His lungs were now engines, spitting thunderheads between his ribcage. Red lightning rippled up his metallic spine as Itali reared back and roared, forcing Watley's company to their knees. Itali was the storm, and the Phyrexians had twisted the embodiment of Ixalan to their own hideous purpose. There was no fear beyond this. There was nothing of Ixalan left in the Elder Dinosaur. Phyrexian troops appeared on the ridge below Itali and Huatli's company ran toward the temple garrison. One of the temple soldiers told Huatli of a passage that would get them to the middle tier of the temple where the priest's chambers were. Then they would have to fight to the top of the 300 steps beyond the archway. 300 steps, a sacred number, 100 steps for each aspect of the threefold sun, the divine symbol of their religion. Kinjali was the awakening sun of order. Talanali was the burning sun of passion. Ixali was the verdant sun of growth. Those inside the temple now prayed to all three. Red lightning cracked across the sky, illuminating the writhing mass of flesh and machine approaching the temple's base. Her company would hold the gate while Hawatli whispered a prayer as she climbed to the recitation chamber. With each step, she thought of Sahili, her love, a very talented artificer and planeswalker. Sahili had once asked why they would fight a foe that could not be defeated, referring to this war with New Phyrexia. She wanted rest from the fear, pain, and dread. Huatli told her the story of Yolotsin, a warrior poet who existed centuries before them. When the Empire was still young, they had killed her family and taken her prisoner because she spoke the language. Her voice was indeed beautiful, so the Emperor made her the warrior poet, and she accepted but only to get revenge. After she passed away, the Empire mourned her, wishing they could hear just one more stanza. Yolotsin faced the same thing they did. Their duty was to live through what they couldn't stop. That didn't inspire much hope within Sahili, but all the same, Watley loved her, it could not lie, and told her that everything would be alright. The jungles of Oroska burned as titanic hideous vines reached from the clouds. Crimson lightning reached across the sky, followed by booming thunder as the golden borders of the city bubbled and melted into their foundation. The canopy shook as trees rotted from the inside out, then exploding into flames. Watley stood atop the temple, hands pressed to her chest, wondering if her company was even still alive. Watley only looked back once during her climb to see her company holding the gate, even as Itali arrived in the city with a hurricane. She reached the recitation chamber, gripped the altar, and spoke to the storm. She spoke to death, to the predator's appetite, the surging ocean, to all calamity, and to the dawn, telling them how Itali was taken by New Phyrexia. The storm faltered, and Huatli stepped away to see the battle raging below. Her company held the gate, but Itali loomed above them, climbing over the bodies of his metal allies. Lightning rippled across his razor spines. Then he froze, 
as a bright light illuminated the temple steps. Through the red storm broke the titanic silhouette of Zatalpa, the elder dinosaur of the dawn. Zatalpa dove, spreading her wings wider than the horizon, and crashed into Itali. The temple trembled, sending Phyrexians tumbling down the stairs while Hawatli's company held their ground. She looked around the Golden City's streets, seeing mighty creatures of all shapes and sizes, carnivores, herbivores, and omnivores together, charging against Phyrexia. Another roar turned her attention to Galta, the elder dinosaur of hunger, tearing through her metal pursuers on a distant temple. As a large metal monstrosity approached her from behind, a geyser of steaming water erupted from beneath it. It was Nezahal, elder of the tides, who wrapped the whip-like creature with its own spindly legs and crushed it under an ocean's worth of pressure. There was an elder missing, Zakama, the embodiment of the threefold sun. Was she dead? Had she been turned? Zatalpa and Itali clashed. Zatalpa's red blood raining down on Watley's company as Itali's black oil poured onto the Golden Temple. Watley ran down the 300 steps, trying not to fall, reaching the gate and looking for her cousin Inti. A blood slick and oil stained Maverin drug the wounded Inti toward her and set him down behind the line. They checked him over. They couldn't do anything for him at the moment. The Sun Empire and Legion of Dusk fought together, all covered in the same blood, oil, and ash. They saw the Phyrexians start to retreat, tumbling down the steps in an avalanche. A great shape moved in the dark streets of Araska below. Zakama's three heads let out a tritonal roar. The front lines of the Phyrexian army began to disintegrate, and Hawatli called for her company to dive to the ground. They did what she said, not so much out of obedience, but as a primal reaction. The wave of heat passed as they realized none of the fallen inhabitants of Ixalan were attacking Zakama, only those who had come from the wretched metal plane. It seemed, even when completed, the inhabitants of Ixalan wouldn't take up arms against such a holy figure. The Great Elder strode through them without care as they bounced off her ankles. The main head opened her mouth and roared, unleashing another wave of heat towards Itali. The winged temple's golden facade melted, and Itali's metal endoskeleton was superheated. Itali fell to his knee, bracing itself with one razor arm and holding up the other in defense. Zakama's main head bit down on Itali's arm and tore it free, while the other two heads pinned him down. For a moment, Itali stopped struggling, and Zakama sniffed her turned cousin, then bit down on his neck. Itali shuddered silently as Zakama tore his head from his body, flinging it to the city below. Zakama stood triumphant as the dawn broke behind her. She roared, and the other elders cried out in response, joined by the unturned survivors of the battle. Zakama's main head looked down to Watley, and she raised her hand in kind to acknowledge the elder. Speaking with Zakama was engaging with the soul of the plane itself, and yet, Watley could only think of a warm truth that everything would be all right. Dawn broke through the curtain of smoke and ash. The day, though not yet won, was here. And that, you guys, is going to do it for today's video. Ixalan, for real, is one of my favorite planes, and despite its faults, it was one of my most favorite blocks to play in all of Magic the Gathering history. So us going back and visiting it in this story is really exciting to me. And this story didn't disappoint if you're a fan of Ixalan. Hwatli has always been an interesting character, especially as a planeswalker. She's a warrior poet, a noble position within the Sun Empire, one who speaks with the dinosaurs and communes with the land, shaping stories and the history for her people. And if you didn't catch it, she's in a romantic relationship with another planeswalker, Sahili Ray. You may have missed when this happened, and I don't blame you. It was kind of discussed in a nice side story. I'll link it below. I think it was called A Note for a Stranger. Anyway, Hwatli and Sahili had met a few times in history and grew a liking that eventually bloomed into a real relationship. So if you're wondering if this just came out of thin air, it didn't really. There was some actual buildup for it. You just may have missed it. What can I say but rip Itali? and the poor dinosaur just had a cereal made for him too. It was cool to see an elder corrupted, I'm sure that will be a card in this set, but it was even cooler seeing Watley commanding Zakama, this massive three-headed dinosaur, once again, and it just ravaging Itali, I mean really tearing into him. But of course, with all respect, rest in peace, Lightning Dino. 
For the time being, Ixalan looks to be defending itself fairly well against New Phyrexia, but at the end of the day, the dinosaurs, including the elders, are just fleshy creatures. They can fall, as Atali shows us, and the plane has no true defense against it. Though there is victory now, the war is far from won. One soul on Ixalan who's still kind of floating around that I'd really like to see completed actually is the Sphinx Azor. Now, if you remember back in the original Ixalan story, Azor was a planeswalker. He actually founded the Ravnican Guild of the Azorius. He's all about law and order, and he actually teamed up with Ugin the Spirit Dragon to find a way to contain his brother Bolas, as they kind of saw him becoming a tyrant of the multiverse. Azor was the one who created the Immortal Sun, and I think he even lost his planeswalker spark in creating it. Anyway, the last time we saw him, Jace Balaran actually used his mind magic to remove the memories of Azor, who essentially said he was going to continue to meddle with Ixalan no matter what they said. Jace didn't like that, so he erased Azor's memories and sent him into exile on some spot of land. So a memoryless sphinx named Azor is somewhere on a deserted island, and he could very well be completed by the Phyrexians. I don't know. I'm just starting to think of some cool things that Ixalan could have done to it with the invasion of New Phyrexia. Anyway, again, I just want to thank you all so much for enjoying today's video, and to remind you that you can show your support by leaving a like, becoming a subscriber or member of the channel, dropping a super thanks, and of course, sharing it with your friends. It all goes a long way in helping build this community. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time guys, see ya!